Hello, welcome to Southampton University. Well, as you can see from what I'm wearing, we're working in sterile laboratory conditions here for this experiment to show the antimicrobial qualities of copper. Well, what we hope to show you is that the sort of bugs and in, that cause infections in hospitals will die off within minutes of being in contact with copper, whereas they may survive for up to weeks or even months on stainless steel. Well, what are the implications of this? Well, the statistics are terrifying. Seven million people around the world are affected by health care associated infections. 37,000 people die in Europe alone. That's as many people as die on the roads. And 100,000 people die in the States. So you can see it's a huge, huge issue. Let me introduce you now to Professor Bill Keeble, who is the Director of Environmental Health Care here at Southampton and a microbiologist, of course. Professor Keeble, can you explain to us the process, how infections are actually transmitted in a hospital setting? Well, we know, for example, that 80% of all infections are spread by touch. And for example, a contaminated hand will contaminate at least another seven touch surfaces if you just go sequentially from there. So does that mean then that what the surface is made of can make a difference? It very much so. Is, is the surface hard and non-absorbent? Is the surface absorbent? We know, for example, that um, stainless steel and plastics, um, hard surfaces which germs can survive on for weeks and months, whereas on copper, our research suggests they die very quickly. So what are we going to see today then? Well, it's very exciting. What, what we're showing is that bacteria die rapidly on copper. So we've set up an experiment for you where we're going to inoculate surfaces. We will compare stainless steel against copper. And hopefully what we can show you is that the bacteria will survive very well on stainless steel, but using a special dye system, we will show that they die very quickly on copper. Well, let's get the experiment started. In a room next door, we've got Emma and Sam on their microscopes. So, Professor Keeble, tell us what they're seeing down the individual microscopes. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the notorious MRSA bug and we're going to put 10 million of the cells on stainless steel, 10 million of the cells on copper. And what we hope to show you is that they live very happily on the stainless steel, but they die rapidly on the copper. And in theory, how long will it take before the bugs are killed off on the copper? Well, we hope to show you that things are going to happen in two or three minutes, and certainly by 10 minutes, hopefully they will have all died out. Let's take a look at the first picture. We're getting live feeds from the microscopes on these two screens. We've got the stainless steel here on the left. I don't know if our camera can pick that up there. Uh, so, Professor Keeble, just explain what we're seeing here. So, what you're seeing here are the individual bacteria sitting on the stainless steel surface. We've used a special dye which shows that while they're bright green, they're still alive. Right. What we're hoping to show is that the, um, they will fade away as they die on the copper surface which will be contrary to what happens on the stainless steel. Well, we were talking before about just the statistics across the world and across Europe of the number of people who are actually affected by healthcare associated infections. We met one woman, Alma Forsyth, who was infected with MRSA in a Brussels clinic, and this is her story. I went into hospital for keyhole surgery on my knee. I was in hospital for five hours. I caught MRSA and I ended up being admitted to a second hospital as an emergency patient. I was really afraid that I might lose my leg. Friends were afraid that I might even lose my life. And now it's nearly two years later, I'm left with a limp. I have to use my crutch when I'm outdoors. The impact on my life physically is that I can no longer dance, and that's been a passion of mine since I was three. I do feel very angry about it. I don't want to go near a hospital again. <laughs> I think it would be wonderful if they could develop this use of copper to prevent infection taking place in the first place. So it's just two minutes into the experiment. Let's take a look at the screens that are linked to those microscopes and see what difference we can see at this point. So, Professor Keeble, talk us through what you see. Well, you can see lots of brightly stained bacteria on the stainless steel surface. So, so not much change there. Not much change there. Copper? And here's the copper surface. May not look too different to you, but in fact, if you look very carefully, we're just starting to see some of the cells beginning to fade out. So these would be the first signs that they're starting to die on copper. So it's incredibly quick. Yes.
Well, in fact, there was a very interesting trial carried out at Selly Oak Hospital in Birmingham here in the UK, where all the fixtures and fittings in one ward were replaced with copper, so things like this door handle and the light switches. And in fact, germs were reduced by more than 90 percent. As we heard from Professor Tom Elliott, who is consultant microbiologist for the Birmingham hospitals. We've talked about agents in the past, cleaning agents like chlorine, cleaning agents like hydrogen peroxide, which have an effect, an immediate effect, but not a long lasting effect, like the copper. And we have shown that the copper in our study has an effect for months. And this is a very exciting finding, an unexpected finding, that perhaps copper will give us its advantage in keeping surfaces clean and enabling us to perhaps challenge infections further. So we're now coming up to six minutes into the experiment and let's have a look at our screens again. So stainless steel, Professor Keeville, a lot of microbes there. Yes, you can see they're still as bright as at the start of the experiment. So and no copper? Infrared. And on this one you can see they're even paler. So very few cells surviving now on the copper surface, even though we put 10 million on there to start with. Now what is the scientific process that's happening here? How are these bugs being killed off? Well we're starting to understand that copper works by multiple means and it shuts down the cell's biochemistry and physiology. We'll be coming up to nine minutes now. Let's look at the screens linked to those microscopes. And this is stainless steel and Professor Keevil still looking full of MRSA microbes. Yes, they're still surviving very nicely on the stainless steel. When you say very nicely, how long will they stay there for now? Oh, they could be there for days or weeks. Days or weeks. Let's yes. look at copper. Well, I think now we're struggling to see anything on this image showing that the bacteria have all died off on the copper surface. And does it have to be pure copper, in fact, or can it be an alloy? No, a range of alloys, including brass, work very nicely to kill MRSA and other of the superbugs. And in fact, these alloys have now been approved as antimicrobial surfaces by a US government agency. Well, Professor Keeble, thank you very much indeed. Some incredibly impressive results there, much quicker than I expected. In fact, there are quite a number of hospitals around the world now who are starting to install copper in their wards to try to deal with this real problem of hospital-acquired infections. Perhaps more when these sort of results start to filter through. Really interesting results. So, from me here in Southampton University, from Emma and Sam on the microscopes, and from Professor Keeble, goodbye, and thank you very much for watching.